Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. This is episode number eight of my Aurora HDR 2018 tutorial series, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. In this episode, we are going to cover single image editing, so taking one photo and editing it in Aurora HDR 2018 instead of a set of brackets. Now, I fire a set of brackets literally like every time I take a photo. Uh, I'll fire a three set bracket. Uh, however, I, uh, there are many times when I'll say, well, I don't really need HDR, or maybe I don't want the HDR look, um, and that sort of thing. And so I'll just take a single exposure and bring it into Aurora and uh, do some things with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do uh, three different photos and talk a little bit about HDR and tone mapping and that sort of thing. So let's get started. Okay, so the first photo is this one here. And let me uh, bring that up. Now, the, this is the first thing I want to talk about. When you bring a single image in, you can of course choose chromatic aberration. There's no ghosting because you don't have multiple images to uh, to de-ghost from. Uh, but you have the ability to say tone mapping or not tone mapping. So tone mapping is basically the process that converts the tonal values uh, so that it can display properly on your screen. Uh, HDR basically captures a higher dynamic range than your screen or your printer can display. And so tone mapping process converts that to basically a lower tonal value range so that it can display properly. Um, so that may sound kind of weird. So here, here's the thing though, is when you drag a single exposure in, you can choose to tone map or not. So I wanna show you the difference. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip tone mapping on this and I'm gonna say create HDR. And now it's not really an HDR because it is a single exposure. Um, but there it is. So like the before and after, it's the same thing, right? There's absolutely no change to the image because no tone mapping has occurred. Now I'm gonna go do the same thing uh, or the same image, bring it in again, but this time I'm gonna check tone mapping and let me show you the difference here. Um, it's enough to notice, right? It's not like an, oh my God, but it's definitely somewhat significant, right? So depending on the image and the look that you're going for, you may or may not wanna check tone mapping. So there you go, there's the difference. Here's the before and after. You can see basically that the tones are brighter, the image is brighter, there's a little bit more sort of a detail available and that sort of thing. So here's kind of what it comes down to. If I want to do a photo with a little bit more edge to it, I'll choose tone mapping. Um, and I'll do a couple like that, and then the third one I'm gonna do without tone mapping, and that's gonna be a lot smoother, gentler, like not an HDR looking photo. So if I burn your eyes on the first or second one, sorry, uh, hang in there, and photo number three is gonna be a little calmer. Um, once you get in, he in here, really there's, you know, uh, umpteen dozen sort of things you can do that are going to really depend on the image. Um, and I'm just kind of playing around here. I don't have a, a, a real plan with this image, but there you go. This is just an old abandoned gas station somewhere along Route 66 in New Mexico. And it's a single exposure. And there's the original. And there's the, uh, let's call that the final. You've got good visibility in the shadows, which is kind of a, a common HDR sort of uh, characteristic. I've got, you know, nice details and colors. Um, I just use HDR Enhance. I would probably actually come in here with Structure, bump that up a little bit, and there you go, just to give it a little grunge. Now I'm kind of chopping up the sky, but you know, you can fix that. Add a new layer, denoise, do whatever. I'm not gonna waste your time showing you how to do that. I think you already know it, but just again, to show you the before and after, single exposure that looked like that, which by the way, that was the middle exposure from a set of brackets, and boom, there it is afterwards. So very grungy, very kind of edgy, to me, it fits the uh, the subject matter, right? An old abandoned gas station just kind of needs to have the pixels pushed around a little bit. So that's what tone mapping will do for you. Now, I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to tone map it as well. So that's checked because that's what I checked last time, so it'll default back to that. And then I'll come in here and just check out. This is an old rusty car also along... Route 66 in New Mexico, which by the way is a gold mine. If you get an opportunity to go along Route 66 and you like HDR, there's just tons of this kind of stuff. So, you know, I would come in here and make some uh, some enhancements. Um, I'd probably get some uh, polarizing on this one. Uh, yeah, look at that sky, bringing that back. That's kind of nice. I'm gonna bring the highlights down. That should impact the sky a bit. There you go. Um, probably a little vibrance. Uh, yeah, a little structure looks good, right? Getting way too much color though, so maybe take the saturation down. 
I'll go into HSL, and I'm just doing this kind of quick because this is more about um, showing what you can get out of a single exposure as opposed to uh, trying to show you what you need to do because um, all of this is kind of art. It's, it's season to taste kind of stuff. And so, you know, the bottom line is, there it is, kind of grungy, kind of overly detailed. Um, but there's a the single exposure, and that was from a set of brackets, you know, looks fine. And there it is, much more crazy, over the top. And and, and that's the point of this one. I kind of went crazy on purpose. Um, if it hurts your eyes, I'm, I'm sorry. And if you're sitting here saying, Jim, that sucks, dude. Um, that's okay. It's kind of crazy. I did it on purpose. Um, but here's the reason I did it on purpose, and that is because... Um, I, I have people ask me sometimes, hey, Jim, do you ever, like, um, if you just have a single exposure, which I don't because I pretty much always fire brackets, but hey, if I have just a single exposure, do you ever make, like, a brighter one and then a darker one, like, in Lightroom and then save them and then blend those three to make a pseudo HDR out of a single exposure that you created copies of and brightened or darkened and then merged? Um, and the answer is no, I don't. Um not just because I always fire brackets, which I always do. Uh, that's just a habit of many years of shooting brackets. I just habitually fire brackets. Like that's my default setting on my camera. Um, unless I'm doing a waterfall uh, or putting on like a 10 stop filter and doing a long exposure when I'm in manual mode. But pretty much every time I'm in aperture mode, which is how I shoot my brackets, I always shoot brackets. Um, anyway, but this is the reason I don't ever... Um, create those pseudo HDRs with one exposure and then create alt alternates and, and merge them. And that's because I don't think you need to. With today's cameras, you get so much dynamic range. And, you know, your camera may be different. That's okay. I shoot with a Sony camera and the dynamic range is incredible. I don't often need HDRs and I definitely don't need to go create, a, you know, a bright and a dark exposure to merge with the actual exposure that I took because you saw this. I mean, that's pretty heavy-handed HDR right there and that's a single exposure. So, that's, what, that's some thoughts on that. Uh, but again, you know, it's to your own taste. This is art, so do whatever you want. I mean, they're your photos, and that's really the point of it. Uh, okay, now this photo, last one, and then I'm going to shut up. Uh, this one is a single exposure, and it's a long exposure. And if you notice, I did not check tone mapping. So the, the base photo that I'm starting with is going to be the same as the before and after, um, as I can show you here, right? So before and after, same photo. No differences because I did not tone map. Now this is like a 50 second exposure with a 10 stop filter on it. So this is one of those times when I did not shoot brackets because um, I had a filter on and I was shooting long exposures. So along the coast, now there's a dust spot, so forgive me, there's a couple spots, things I need to take out, but the point is not that. The point is you can just come in with these single exposures um, and create beautiful photos. And, and here's what I, I reason I wanted to do this, and that is because I think when you hear the word HDR, um, I'm not going to use any structure. I definitely don't want that. Or polarizer. Uh, actually, I do want TBT. I want to brighten that bottom a little bit. Um, that's what I was looking for. But look at that. I mean, that doesn't look like HDR, right? And so you hear the word HDR, and the word HDR is attached to this product name. It's called Aurora HDR, but that's not an HDR photo. There's nothing about it that's HDR. It's not tone mapped. It's not a merger of multiple brackets. It's a single long exposure, um, and there it is, a quick edit, but uh, you know, your taste may vary, and, and that's okay if you don't like it, but in this quick edit, I think I have a beautiful photo, and I did it in Aurora HDR. So my point is, you don't have to fire brackets every time, because uh, even with the single exposure, you can create an HDR look in Aurora if you want to get crunchy, which I did on the previous two, but you can also take a single exposure, just a soft, gentle sunset, you know, decent dynamic range, but not massive. Like, I don't have uh, any detail in the shadow here. I kind of like it, but if you wanted, you could add a layer and brighten that if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it sort of in, in dark and in, in silhouette. Um, but you can do so much with Aurora. So even though it has Aurora H, you know, has the word or the uh, acronym HDR in the title, don't let it make you think you can only do HDRs because you can do whatever you want. Gorgeous single exposure editing in Aurora is real, it's easy, and it's natural. And that's the thing I want to be clear about is, sure, the first two were kind of crunchy, but they were rusty, old, beat-up stuff, and they just deserve, and they want to be kind of pushed around. But something like this, you just want to enhance the light a little bit, maybe bring the colors back, and just let it go, because 
you know, I mean, I'm a little biased because it's my photo, but I mean, that's beautiful. So um, that's Aurora for you. That's single exposure editing and some thoughts on, you know, all that stuff. Um, I hope this is helpful. If you liked it, like it, please. Hit the like button. Uh, leave me a comment with any feedback. And if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. Share with your friends. Get the word out. Let this tutorial series, you know, take uh, take flight or whatever it is. Um, have wings, sprout wings, and grow. So um, I'm having a lot of fun. I've got a couple more episodes planned. I don't know. I think I may stop around 10 episodes, but we'll see. I might be convinced to go to um, 12. i got to see. And by the way, if you have certain topics that you think would make a great uh, subject for this series, don't hesitate to leave me a comment about that as well. I can't get to everything, but um, I, I do read and respond to all the comments. So thanks for doing that. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I hope it helps. If you have any questions, let me know. And until next time, my friends, adios.